purify and bless our hearts. Open our hearts that we might see, that we might be something This mantra may have resonated in the hearts of the First Sisters of St. Agnes, who were ordinary women of the Wisconsin frontier. With no historic ties to European congregations, they were always ready to move beyond the known to the edge of tomorrow. They opened their communal heart to a call to serve those whose faith life or human dignity was threatened. Like many religious congregations, the Congregation of St. Agnes, or CSA, has more than one founder. They have a trinity of founders who all knew each other. However, the three never worked together with the intent of starting a religious congregation. Each responded to a call at a point in time and thus were instrumental in CSA becoming a religious congregation. CSA began with a call that first stirred in the heart of Father Caspar Rarell, an Austrian priest who emigrated to the United States in 1845. Arriving in Milwaukee, Bishop Henney assigned him the area from Milwaukee to Green Bay and from the east side of Lake Winnebago to Lake Michigan. He founded numerous churches and schools. His efforts to find a religious congregation in Wisconsin or to bring sisters from Europe to educate children were fruitless. On a trip to Rome, he visited the tomb of St. Agnes, praying for her help in founding a teaching sisterhood. He promised to name it in her honor. With the blessing of Pope Pius IX, he returned to Wisconsin in 1855, sharing his dream of starting a teaching sisterhood with his fellow priests. Three years later, Gertrude Rayburg met Father Casper, telling him of her desire to be a sister. She was soon joined by two other young women, Father Casper welcomed them to their new way of life in August 1858. His dream of starting a sisterhood dedicated to St. Agnes of Rome was becoming a reality. The sisters lived an austere life, residing with neighboring families until the first convent was built in Barton, the birthplace of CSA. They had no stove, chopped their own wood, carried water for two blocks, and did not have the proper implements, strength, or skill to cultivate 11 acres of farmland for their produce. They experienced much deprivation and often went hungry. The purpose of the new society, Father Casper wrote, was that by means of their united strength, they may train and educate children in such a way that they may come to God in heaven. Others soon joined them. Shortly after arriving in Barton, Father Casper had them preparing children for their first communion. If a girl was 14 and knew a little English, she was sent out to teach. A few years later, there was a crisis in membership. Many had entered and only two remained. Sister Clara, the former Gertrude Rayburg, the first to enter and profess her vows, decided to leave. One sister remained until a month later when Sister Clara returned. A new stability came to the group in 1863 when Mary Hazlitt arrived from Detroit. Upon meeting her, Father Casper remarked, You are a child of destiny. Your name shall be Agnes. Nineteen months later, at age 17, Sister Agnes took her first vows and within a few hours was elected the first canonical superior, a position she held until her death in 1905. After her election, Sister Agnes divided her time between Barton and Marytown, where she was the principal, a teacher, and organist. God opened the eyes of her heart and Agnes realized something new was being asked of her. If the community were to survive, she needed to let go of her responsibilities in Marytown, live at the convent in Barton, provide for the religious and educational formation of the sisters, establish a novitiate, and the growing sisterhood needed an accepted rule. 
1870 was significant in the life of the young congregation. Father Francis Haas, a Capuchin Franciscan priest, became Sister Agnes's mentor and spiritual guide. At his suggestion, and after prayerful reflection and deliberation with others, Sister Agnes moved the congregation to Fond du Lac, initially causing tension with Father Casper. Mutual respect eventually led to reconciliation. The sisters flourished in their new environment. The congregation, now 12 years old, still had no rule. When Father Francis arrived to lead the sisters' retreat in July 1870, Sister Agnes asked him to write a rule. He agreed to do so. Eight days later, as their retreat was closing, the vice chancellor arrived informing Sister Agnes the community was being disbanded. They had neither an accepted rule nor papal approval. Fortunately, Father Francis had completed a draft of the rule, which the vice chancellor found acceptable. Imagine the joy of the sisters. They now had an acceptable rule and were on their way to receiving papal approval. The day culminated with Father Francis telling Sister Agnes she would be known as Mother Agnes. In addition to Father Casper, CSA honors Mother Agnes and Father Francis as their founders. God continued to do something new within and among CSA, inviting them time and again to embrace the pioneering spirit of the early sisters. They expanded their education ministry to Ohio, Kansas, Indiana, Pennsylvania, New York, and beyond. In 1894, upon the invitation of a pastor, a physician, and several businessmen, Mother Agnes agreed to build a hospital in Fond du Lac. St. Agnes Hospital opened in 1896, beginning CSA's 121-year ministry in healthcare. Under the continued leadership of Mother Agnes, CSA's health ministry expanded to long-term care. In 1903, the sisters began serving at Boyle Home, now known as St. Francis Home. In 1987, the school sisters of St. Francis transferred sponsorship of Waupon Memorial Hospital to CSA. 100 years after their founding, in 1996, St. Agnes Hospital and the Fond du Lac Regional Clinic formed Agnesian Healthcare. The system grew to include hospitals and nursing homes at sites throughout Fond du Lac, Dodge, and Green Lake counties. In 1937, the congregation had considered establishing another hospital. With a 40-year history in healthcare, CSA had both the experience and sisters anxious to serve in other locations. They were offered opportunities in Chicago, Decatur, Indiana, and Monroe, Wisconsin. The decision to build a hospital in Monroe was made within a few months. In October 1937, Dr. Bomley contacted Mother Aloysia telling her that the Monroe physicians favored the Sisters of St. Agnes building a hospital. After a few letters and meetings between the parties, Mother Aloysia and her council decided to honor the request of the physicians. St. Clair Hospital was dedicated less than two years later on August 1, 1939. The merger of St. Clair Hospital and Monroe Clinic in 1992 resulted in a regional integrated healthcare network offering a full spectrum of services at the hospital and clinic in Monroe and at nine other clinics in southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois. For 160 years, God's faithfulness sustained the ministries flowing from the leadership of Mother Agnes. Monroe Clinic and Ignatian Healthcare have continued to evolve up to the present day. The care sites that joined SSM Health have a strong mission-driven culture that imbibes the spirit of the Sisters of St. Agnes. Today, CSA is a vibrant community of women religious who serve with simplicity and hospitality throughout the United States and in Nicaragua. Their mission is to participate in the mission of Christ by joyful service in the church, always aware that we too are among the needy and are enriched by those we serve. Inspired by our founders, by the missionary zeal of Father Casper Rero, the courageous initiatives of Mother Agnes Hazard, and the spiritual influence of Father Francis Haas, we continue to respond in our time to those whose faith life or human dignity is threatened. They remain committed to transformation of the world, the church, and themselves, and do so by promoting systemic change for the quality of life justice for the economically poor, 
furtherance of the role of women in church and society, mutuality, inclusivity, and collaboration. Like their early members, the Sisters of St. Agnes stood on the edge of tomorrow, realized God was calling them to something new, and opened their communal heart to transfer sponsorship of their beloved health ministries to SSM Health Ministries. To commemorate the transfer of sponsorship, SSM Health gifted CSA with a basket, symbolizing the basket Mother Odelia and the first Franciscan Sisters of Mary carried through the streets of St. Louis, delivering food and supplies to the sick in their homes and receiving offerings from others. It became a tangible image of the Sisters' willingness to give and to receive to share with those in need, and to accept gifts from others to extend their ministry. It is also a sign of faith that God will provide all that is needed. CSA gifted SSM Health with a lantern, reminiscent of the lanterns Mother Agnes had placed in every window at St. Agnes Hospital, as a sign of welcome and hospitality to passers-by and all who sought care. May the light from the lantern, which symbolizes the light of Christ within each of us, always emanate from the heart of each person associated with SSM Health. Together, we are continuing the sacred calling that inspired both the Sisters of St. Agnes and the Franciscan Sisters of Mary to begin the ministries that have become who we are today. Through our exceptional services, May we reveal the healing presence of God to each other in the communities and people we serve.